Welcome to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. I'm Catherine Raymond. And I'm Jane Walker Wood. And we are a show about the modern entrepreneur. Each week we interview company founders. And before we tell you who we're going to have on today, which we're really excited about, we want to thank our sponsors, Impact Hub, Santa Barbara, and also Montecito Bank and Trust. We have two great guests here this week, including Cameron Dennis and his partner, Albert Chen, and they're going to talk about Loca Fresh, which is their new startup, bringing farmers market to your door. Yes, and also Linda Wyman is going to be here. Many people know her as the Linda behind Linda.com, but uh, she's really a Renaissance woman, a business owner, computer instructor, author, and we're going to talk to her about uh, her movie production. In fact, she has produced 20 three documentaries over the last nine years. Fascinating woman. So we're going to chat with her coming up. A good day here on the radio. Uh, And right now we take this time to take a look at uh, business news. Of course, a lot of it is going on here locally in the aftermath of the fire and the floods. And we're going to talk a little bit about Montecito. Jane, I know you've already had your own personal experience about this, but uh, if you have looked at the latest stats, Montecito residents and business owners have filed $422 million in insurance claims losses since January 9th. And those numbers are part of a report that was just released. You can find out more. We'll tell you where. California Department of Insurance, the insurance commissioner, spoke at a press conference earlier this week and talked about 2,000 claims for residential and commercial property losses. And uh, we also were just talking off the air that Santa Barbara County is working with FEMA on a recovery map for Montecito. They're going to be updating flood hazard area maps and saying that the rebuilding process is something we knew, but is going to be taking years and redefining property lines, right? Yeah, and that could affect insurance, the ability to get fire and flood insurance going forward. And that was also the conclusion of a UCSB economic forecast study that was just done. Uh, and they're saying the twin disasters has caused over 213 layoffs in retail, accommodation, and food services, and 60% of businesses closed for 13 days on average. Half of the businesses surveyed said they have laid off permanently one employee. Not a lot of good news. And property tax, property values of Montecito have dropped already $1.2 billion. And we're looking at repercussions, obviously, for area schools, but uh, many other repercussions to come. One of the things we want to warn people about, which we have done in previous weeks, but they're still out there in force, is people that are coming to homes and saying they're doing surveying. You really have to be careful about this. And you were just telling me off the air that you actually had something happen to you, right? Well, you know, one of those flyers Uh came to the house, and I constantly am having the IRS calling me and telling me I'm going to jail. But uh, <laughs> yeah, other uh, news in town is Cox Business. They're partnering with Santa Barbara business organizations to launch Boost to Business Santa Barbara. And that's a campaign including TV spots and promos to highlight local businesses and encourage consumers to please shop Santa Barbara. Yes. Also, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but all those commuters out there that come in from Ventura into Santa Barbara and Goleta and Carpinteria, of course, that were blocked off with the 101. We know what that was all about. But uh, finally, the Amtrak Pacific Surfliner started its new schedule on Monday. People were offered free passes for a month. Uh, Over 1,200 people took up that offer. The Surfliner will connect people from Ventura into Carpinteria, then Santa Barbara and Goleta on what is a work sc- schedule. Like I said, I had a small glitch the first day that a train on the wrong side of the tracks that didn't work out so well. It was just I more think of it a, was a British train. Was, <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> Little delays there. Because they but, drive on the other side of the road. I'm not insinuating the British aren't good, but they're trains. Traffic sorry. Solutions <laughs> is giving people incentives to try the train. They actually have a lottery to give fold-up bikes to commuters who use them at least wow. 40 times. So you, you get your fold-up bike and then you bike off to work. Also, the MTD is stepping up, so they're going to the train depots and actually taking people in to areas uh, of employment in Carpinteria and in Santa Barbara and in Goleta as well. And they have uh, offered free train tickets, as we mentioned there. There's a ribbon cutting coming up on, sa- on Friday. Very exciting. Now, we wouldn't be 
a show about co-working if we didn't tell you a little bit about what's going on. Apparently, even churches are now getting into the co-working business. In Dallas, a company called Sync Life Co-working is on a mission to put idle church space to work as co-working space, and that's also to help counter some of the loss of incomes of churches because they have less members. That is have. interesting. I wonder if you get really good vibes when you're working yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> nice. Well, and that brings me to one of my other co-working places yes. for getting vibes. Hooters in Tokyo is now no. going to be doing co-working. Yeah, they're going to have uh, 20 seats available, and you get a discount on drinks, and they're served to you by... The Hooters waitress. So okay, I can see our, our engineer going, where would I rather work? Hooters or church? Hooters, Hooters church. church. Not sure Depends about that. That's how much work you want to get done. Mm. All right. Uh, Spotify, you probably heard, has gone public, uh, making a pretty decent splash on Wall Street. You know a little bit more about stocks than I, but shares of the music streaming company as high as about 169 apiece before then losing steam. But does that happen? Today. Happen with Facebook. It's happened with a lot of them. But just keep in mind, uh, Wall Street, well, saying Spotify left the market with a value of about $29 billion. Just by comparison, internet radio station Pandora, the market value stands at $1.2 billion nearly seven years after that company went public. So, Well, I guess we'll have to wait to see if there's any tweeting on it to see how it's really affected. But it was interesting, asked on CNBC, the CEO of uh, Sonus, which is a local company, was on talking about Spotify. They've had a partnership since 2010. And then um, Gene Simmons from KISS was on and basically saying things like Spotify are the kiss of death for musicians. You can't quit your day job anymore. So. Well, inquiring minds want to know, did, uh, did Jane buy any stock? Uh, no. Okay. No, I usually don't buy IPOs. No. Oh, no all right. No. All right. We are going to take a quick break. After the break, just want to mention that UCSB professor and business author John Greathouse is going to be joining us. Uh, it is no secret. It's one of the favorite parts of our show. He's going to answer your questions, so it could be yours today. Make sure you're listening. You are listening to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. You can follow us on social media, and thanks to Impact Hub, Santa Barbara, Montecito Bank, and trust many of our other sponsors, too. You can find online at CoworkRadio.com, and we'll be right back. Hi, it's Catherine Raymock. Are you buying or selling a home? See Compass Realtor Terry Riken. I went to Terry because of his reputation and experience, but was quickly taken by his genuine enthusiasm. It's that combination that truly sets him apart. Terry specializes in properties in Montecito, Hope Ranch, Santa Barbara, and San Inez Valley, and has 39 years of experience as an agent and broker. There are so many realtors to choose from, but only one Terry Riken. Find out for yourself. Google search Terry Riken. What's that? This, the newest online business banking around. Can you initiate wires and approve transfers? Yes. Pay bills. Check. Cash management. Of course. All business, all online, all on your phone. You bet. My computer, too. It's Montecito Bank and Trust's new business online banking. It works as hard as I do. Huh. Montecito Bank and Trust. You got it. Montecito Bank and Trust. Behind every great community is a great bank. Montecito.bank. Member FDIC. Hi, I'm Dan Farrick, Managing Director of the Impact Hub Santa Barbara. Come visit us and find out why co-working spaces are booming. Our two locations in the Funk Zone and downtown Santa Barbara offer private offices, permanent desks, and a variety of co-working memberships starting as low as $60 a month. Mention Cowork Radio when you book our tour, and we'll give you 10% off your first six months of membership. Join a community where you can live and work smart. Go to impacthubsb.com or call 284 284- 0078 to find out more. Welcome back to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. I'm Catherine Raymock along with Jane Walker Wood, and we are here as we are every week with UCSB professor and author John Greathouse. He is here to answer your questions, and you can email those questions, ask John at coworkradio.com. Go to our website at coworkradio.com as well. Hey John, how you doing? Awesome. How about you? Oh, just great. Hey, we've got a, a question, and it's from Kyle. 
Um, Kyle is uh, he runs a nonprofit mm-hmm. and wondering if you have any kind of insight into the new tax plan and how it might affect nonprofits. Um, a lot of big changes coming and he wants to protect his mission. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Kyle. So I'm not a tax expert. Don't play one on TV. Um, so obviously <laughs> I, I can't give specific tax advice because I just don't know it. Um, but but I can speak to the issue. I, I always feel like tax deductions are sort of like saying thank you when a favor is, is given. Um, they're nice, but they're not the reason you're doing it. So I think most people aren't going to donate money to a charity just because there's a tax deduction. But doesn't that depend whether we're talking about a company donating money through, like, say, a foundation or versus an individual donating money? on their specific tax return. It, it absolutely will make a difference. So I think an individual might be more sensitive to uh, to the deduction. But here's here's the advice I would give um, I would give Kyle because we can't control that 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 change in the law. I would just remind him and everyone and I've worked with people that are starting nonprofits. It's just like a for-profit business. When somebody writes you a check, they're just like a customer mm-hmm. or an investor. They want a return. Um, nobody's going to write you a check and say, leave me alone. I don't ever want to hear from you again. <laughs> like they will, they'll write you a check because they believe in your mission. Well, understand the why. Why did they write you the check? And the why might be slightly different for different people. And then service that why. So when you see that person again, when you communi- communicate with that person, make sure you're reminding them the underlying value proposition that you're bringing into the community or, or whatever, whomever you're servicing, and just remind them that their money is making a difference and be concrete about it. So so have some quantifiable statistics, maybe have a case study. Um, I, I, work, I do some work with the Scholarship Foundation, and they always bring in students that have been affected by the scholar. I mean, it's just heart Now, it's I heart have a rendering. question because our show is based in Santa Barbara, and yep. as you know, we're going through, we just had the mudslides in Montecito, and yes. a lot of charitable money now is going towards what's happening in Montecito mm-hmm. and the charities, established charities in Santa Barbara are receiving less money. Mm. So how how do they adjust to this? Well, again, I think it's, it's explaining their value prop and reminding people that it's important too. I mean, I think there, there's going to be trends in giving, um, you know, just when something makes the news, whether it's overseas or in your own backyard. Again, those are hard to fight against, but you're going to if you if your nonprofit's up and running, you probably have some core givers already. So just make sure you're communicating with those core givers and you don't lose them to another nonprofit. It's it, fine if they make a, a donation over there, but you want to keep them in your fold, right? It's definitely I, – I, you know, Jane and I have had this discussion, and I don't know that if you know this, but I'm actually the development director over at CADA, the Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse. Ah. So we're, we have, we've started to see this trend. Uh. And one of the things that I've thought about doing is banning together with other nonprofits mm-hmm. um, because the retail community does so great with this, right? They don't mind saying, look, our – you know, we 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 need people to come out and shop, and right, we're going right, to create right. cash mobs and do all this yeah. stuff. But for some reason, there's an apology almost there from the nonprofits, be. and there shouldn't be. And Jane actually thinks there should be more people working together within the nonprofits. Well, so. I, I could see some mergers taking mm-hmm. place, and I did read just last week that uh, Santa Barbara Symphony and Libero mm-hmm. are going to merge, and I don't know if that came as a result of. Um, the the funding cuts, or if that was already pre planned, but if some of the charities are similar, if they merged, right, yeah, or just maybe even merge on events or merge right. on fundraising, you know, that's not a bad idea. And then you can try out like the new partnership instead of going right into the marriage. <laughs> well, and it's also a little bit of cross selling. Like if you have certain donors that I don't have, but but we're both doing something related to yeah. drug and alcohol, maybe I'm doing a different a different stage on the continuum. Maybe I'm doing housing and you're doing intervention or whatever. Getting those groups together and, and, and exposing donors to multiple complementary and then selling that story and saying, look, I'm helping on this side of the equation. This other nonprofit's helping over here. Together, we're making a difference. Again, I think it's, it's you should not be apologetic. It's a business. If you believe in the value you're bringing into the community, you should not be ashamed to talk about it. And you should not be ashamed to try to get the money that you think you need to make the mission happen. I, I love that. Hey, um, John, when you're dealing with entrepreneurs, and I hadn't really thought of it until I read this question because so many of our nonprofits are there, but of course they were created at one point. How many people Start have up. you, yeah, have you, yeah, starting up, are, want to create an actual nonprofit, not a physical something? It, my students do it, come to me all the time, <clears throat> every year, and I have a few that are still running six, seven years later. Um, they're successful. They're you know they're fulfilling their mission. 
Um, we do, again, this is for Santa Barbara listeners, not folks maybe listening to this online, but we do have um, the Hutton Foundation in town. We're very fortunate to have them, and they have an organization that works specifically to help nonprofits get started. So if you contact them, they have a program to help you start a new nonprofit, which I think is a wonderful gift. In- 